Hello Flosstube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome all of you to my channel this week. I'm very glad that you're here. If you're here for cross stitch, you're in the right place. I have several pieces to share with you. Um, I'm going to share with you my progress on my current focus pieces and I have a tiny bit of haul. Uh, one, some of it's crochet and, and another is a pin pillow that I ordered and received this week. So let's just jump right in. So this past weekend, um, I didn't make a goal on one of my focus pieces, and that is a sampler company, Brenda Keys, and the, the piece is called a sampler story. And this is the piece. It's a total of 24 squares of different sampler motifs within, the, within this piece. And so last weekend, I did not reach my goal. So this week, I, didn't, I did not set one for this piece. Um, I knew I wouldn't have that much time to stitch, but I had a little more time than I anticipated. So let me share with you my, my little next little square finish on this one. And it is right here. Well, it's not folding just correctly. And this one's called Home. So it looks like you've got a mom and two children, a little boy and a little girl. And then there's a spinning wheel there. A key. It looks like a tea kettle and a teacup up on a shelf. So I was very happy with that little finish. And I hope to drop down this week and make at least a start, hopefully a finish, but at least a start on the next one. And that is going to be a mermaid. And she's red haired. And so I'm thinking she may be Ariel, a little mermaid. So that will be my... My um, goal for this week, I'm just going to make a start, at least a start, and hopefully a finish on that one. And that'll give me one more square. And with the completion of that square, then I've actually reached halfway through the pattern. So I also did block in a couple of more of the empty squares this week. And that was one, that was one of my goals, were, was to get a couple of those uh, mapped out, because that's a lot of counting. And I'm stitching this on one strand of thread over one linen thread, with the call for DMC, um, but the squares themselves are, I think they're 49. When you count the um, outline, they're 49 by 49, but that's a lot of counting. And it's not so bad, at least when you have the one above or below to the side that you know you've got one side already counted out. Um, but I find it just very tedious. So um, when I first started it, I was trying to put in at least a thread or two each, each time I picked it up in the border boxes, and I hadn't done that for a couple of um, times I've touched it. So this past week I did get a couple of those in, and so that makes me happy. So at least when I start the one below home this week, she's already lined, lined out, already stitched, and hopefully I can make at least another box or two and have everything lined out. Um, so all I've got to do is stitch no more of that 49 by 49 counting. Okay, so if, if you've been watching me for the past couple of weeks, um, on tax day here in the U.S., I'm posting a stitch along with my friend Mary on Instagram. She is Stitcher211 for Blue Ribbon Design Pattern. Your pattern of your choice is just hashtag BRB for Blue Ribbon Design, so BRB Tax Day Sal. And I had planned on working or starting Quaker-esque, which is a blue ribbon design, had shared with you in the last video the colors and the linen. And then Thursday morning while I'm at work, I realized, hey, I've got a blue ribbon design pattern in the works. So why am I starting another one when I already have one on the go? And this for me has been, my, my face is itching, I'm sorry. This has been a year of at least touching my whips, trying to finish as many whips as I can, as well as fully finishing items. So with that being said, instead of starting Quakeress, I picked up Alphabet Zoo by Blue Ribbon Design. So let me share with you that pattern. Here it is here. And I started it last year um, as a piece to hang in a baby's room. So the piece called for Classic Colorworks Bill Swa and cranberry, which is a beautiful color. And it very, makes it very vibrant. 
very dramatic. And so once I realized um, I wanted to make this for baby, I did know the sex of the baby, so I didn't want to, I wanted to tone the color down just a tad and make it more gender neutral. Not that red isn't gender neutral, but like I said, this is so much more dramatic. I wanted to tone it down a little bit. So I chose DMC 3362, and I've got it on one of the thread cards here. So this is the color. And I think it's a beautiful green. And I want to share with you my start. So, like I said, it was already a whip. I did pick it up and I ended up putting, putting it down. So, when I picked it up Thursday, I worked on this Thursday and Friday and made a, made a finish on the letter box for letter A. And I also did partial outlines of the one below and then this one. Just show, so you know, since I did just talk to you about borders, this these are 40 by 50. <laughs> so I'm just killing myself with these. Being a little dramatic there, aren't I? Just like the color red. I just find it really tedious just to do straight lines. I want to I want to stitch an aardvark. I want to stitch a crocodile, or I'm sorry, it's an alligator. It's supposed to start with A. Um, all that counting just is not as exciting. So anyway, this is a um, 40 count. This is pl platinum linen, and I'm stitching one strand of thread over two linen threads with 3362 DMC. And if any of you wanna join in, just join in at any time. If you have one on the go, if you wanna start a blue ribbon design, um, just pull it out, just use the hashtag so we can see what you're working on. And um, everybody's welcome so there's that so my goal for this one on this week is to I'm not sure if I'm gonna drop over and do B because there's four squares across um, the one down here will be E I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna go down to E but don't hold me to that it's teachers prerogative right we've got a right to change our mind when we want to okay and then my next piece that I've touched this week is um, Red Work Sampler by Moho Stitches. And I started this this, this past or last weekend um, after visiting the shop with my friend Christine. And here it is. So if you remember, if you were here with the last video, I changed the color from red to classic color works campfire. And here it is. I also was using DMC, oops, I dropped my little bag. So DMC 918 and Campfire. And they're very similar. And my plan originally was to use one strand of one, one strand of other. Not meaning that I was going to um, stitch with two threads, meaning put them those two together. I was just gonna use stitch with one strand of campfire, finish that thread out, reload my needle, stitch with one of 918. And then when I realized, realized after stitching that a couple of times that you could not tell the difference, I decided just to go with the campfire. So I'm stitching solely with campfire. And I want to share with you my progress. I made a lot more progress than I thought I was gonna make, and I'm very happy about that. So I was hoping to get into the uh, first row of letters and I actually got down into, completed the first row of letters, made a good start on the second row and I was trying to make it down to this decorator border, I would say. And it's like a row of berries and, and leaves and vine. And I wanted to make a start on that. So for this coming week, um, I'd like to finish the next two rows of letters and at least get another, or at least a good start on the uh, berry line of berries. But I, I'm really happy with my progress on this one. I love the color. But after reading some of the comments, and I love reading your comments when you leave them, so thanks for all of those that take the time to do that. Um, there was a lot of discussion because I'm stitching this one on 36 count. Lakeside Linens Magnolia. So it is it has just a little bit of a yellow tinge to it, very light, and I really like it. Goes really good with that rust color red. 
And so I got a lot of um, questions, uh, comments about the color I used, comments about whether or not you use one strand of DM or one strand of thread when stitching on 36. Some prefer two. And however you do it, that's perfectly fine. I just enjoy stitching with one strand over two threads on 36 count or higher. I love to see my X. Um, it's a little more prim. Um, I just love the look of it. So that's what I did. But listening, not listening, reading the comments um, made me, you know, my mind started spinning, thinking. And so I decided to, I knew I had enough fabric that I could make a few test stitches at the bottom. So I flipped it over. And this is DMC 815, which is a very bright red, as you can see. And what I did was stitch that two over two with 815. And it's very dense. I mean, we're cross stitchers, so we're no, we know that those are little crosses. But it's very dense. Um, like I said, I love to be able to see the X's. You can't see the fabric behind. There's no shadow of the white fabric behind the threads. So this is just to um, just a comparison. I just found it interesting, and I thought some of you that maybe have not tried this yourself would like to see it. So I'm going to share it here. So then you can see mine here on your left with the one over two, and the one on the right is two over two. I still love the one over one. But if you ever wanted just to take a look at the difference, there you go. So I do get a lot of questions. This week I was, um, I didn't realize that somehow on my phone, I have my two email accounts um, combined. My personal plus the one for the channel. And People sometimes met, uh, send an email, sometimes not. And I thought that they were still dumping into the same account because I had them combined, and they weren't. So somehow I had turned that off. And this week when I realized that, there was a dump of several emails that I'm trying to answer back with questions about the stitching. And I just want everyone to know, thank you for, for trusting my opinion and reaching out to me with questions concerning cross-stitch, whether it be with stitching with one or two over 36 count or whatever it may be. Um, just know I'm not an expert stitcher by no means. I'm just someone who really loves my hobby and it brings me joy. And if any, in any time that I can answer a question for you, I will gladly do it because I wanna spread that same joy that I feel with my stitching to you. Um, but I would also do that with others, pick the brains of other stitchers as well because that is where I got to where I am now is in a, I was lucky enough to have a local stitch group. I still have that stitch group that have critiqued me, corrective criticism, support, friendship, and love over many years with my stitching. Give me a little pointer here and a little piece of advice here to get me where I am now. So I, if I can be that person for you, um, please don't hesitate to email me. But also, these other floss tubers, we all kind of feel the same way. We all want to help you to feel the same joy that we have. So thank you for trusting me to do that for you by reaching out to me and sending me an email or leaving a comment or a question below. So I, I appreciate that. Now, let's get into my haul for this week. So I got one thing in the mail that I ordered. And this is from Under the Wool and Willow. And I thought I had her card here, and I guess I don't. But Under the Wool and Willow, I've shared several months ago a tomato pin pillow that she makes beautiful, beautiful pin pillows. I'm trying to see if, I, there it is, here's her card. And she makes beautiful pin pillows tomato and I've, I've got I was lucky enough to grab one for myself and I'm so happy to have it this time I'm perusing the, the Instagram which is my favorite media at the moment 
and she had posted some new pin pillows and they were just woolen pin pillows and and so her things do not stay long so once she loads them onto etsy they're out of there i pop in the one that i loved the most was still available so i nabbed it so i want to share it with you it come this past week it's beautifully wrapped it has her business sticker on it and it's wrapped in beautiful gift paper and here it is isn't this gorgeous everything about this i just loved it i love the checkered gray and blue and purple i just think it's beautiful and i'm lucky thankful to have it this was made by the hands of another another stitcher so it's something for me to treasure so i thought i would share that with you and then back in december a friend of mine michelle at stripe rose um, tagged me in a post for this now i don't know if i've shared with michelle or not but if if you watch her channels or if you follow her on instagram um she is a she does some beautiful sampler she's a beautiful stitcher beautiful cross stitcher but she also is a crocheter and so over the past few years following her on instagram getting to know her through there um, she inspired me to start crocheting she is the reason i started to crochet or become interested in it and so I started with making one for my father, and I've since made an afghan for my two daughters, and I made one this past Christmas for myself, and it was called the Ripples of Joy afghan, and my mother has claimed it, so now I still do not have an afghan of my own, but I think this one will be mine. So I wanna share with you the, cut, the pattern, um, or actually the color chart, but this is the color of the afghan and there it is there and this is the actual picture that i was tagged in and let me share with you the yarn so it came this week um when she tagged me in it in december look at that isn't that beautiful when she tagged me in this in december try as i might i could not get my hands on a color pack of these yarns so I did try to navigate over to, um, because this is coming from the UK, and I think it's called the, let me make sure before, I, I'm reaching for my glasses and they're not here. Let me reach for, yes, the Knitting Network. So it's coming from the Knitting Network, from the UK. And when I would go online, they would be out of the color packs of this yarn. And so, Oftentimes, things will just pop back in my head. We're talking about April. We're coming from December. So, through December and probably January, I'm trying to get my hands on them. Couldn't. I think about it about a month ago, and guess what? They had it back in stock. So, I ordered it, and I'm very happy to have it. And I can't wait to start it because it's going to test my skills. Um, I still consider myself... A novice, a couple of people say, you're not a novice, you've made three. Yes, I've made dishcloths, and I've made three afghans. Three of them were all the same stitch, just repeated for three afghans. So I'm really good at the lark's foot stitch. <laughs> I can do that with no problems. When I picked up this past Christmas, the Ripples of Joy, which is I found on a YouTube video, I struggle with that one. Um, because it was stitches I had not done. Um, it was chevron, which I had not done. Um, it challenged me. It stressed me. Um, it put me outside of my little crochet bubble. But everything worked out fine. My mother does not see the mistake. She loves it so much that she asked for it. So she now has it. This one is not just one stitch is different type stitches is changing your colors i will be very much outside of my crochet bubble again but i'm so looking forward to it because these colors make it all worth it so um, i'm not sure exactly when i'm gonna start this 
I've noticed that as a novice crocheter, I like to stitch in the fall and the winter. So I'm not sure if I will pick this up because I don't want, you know, I live in South Carolina here in the U.S. It's very hot and very humid in the summers. Um, also, my stitch room is upstairs where the heat rises. Even with the air on, the heat is still rising. <laughs> and with that being said, I don't know that I'll, I'm being silly just to say that I doubt I will pick this up in the summer. So I may hold off until the fall so you won't see this back out in action till the fall, but I'm looking forward to it. And um, thanks, Michelle, for tagging me in it. Okay, I'm gonna ask, answer a few questions and then I'm gonna let you go this week. So, for the past several videos up until last week, I have been filming down in my dining room. I come back up into my stitch room last week, and so I've got a lot of new followers or subscribers. Thank you, thank you. Um, but they had questions about the things behind me, so I wanted to talk about those really quick um, about the ones I got questions on. So one of them is for this piece, and this is, and I don't even know if you can see it for the glare, but this Quaker piece is cut by RETM, and it is Joy. And I think there are at least two others. I know there's a piece Quaker like this, and I want to say there's one more. But this one features Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in the letters. And I think piece, if, if don't, quote me, but I think peace has the wise men in it in the, in the story of Christ's birth. Okay, this, someone asked me if these two panels, and I'm sorry you can see that light there, but they asked me about those two panels and if it was cross-stitched. It is not. It's a center fold, believe it or not, from Ladies Home Journal from 1924, April 1924 and it's called the wedding party so I want to I'll take this one down so you can see it and I actually found these at a thrift shop for I don't know they were pennies pennies so whoever had framed them actually they had something else in the frame there were several ladies home journals and McCall pages that um, they had in protective sleeves and then a couple that were framed. I bought all of them. <laughs> and then I pulled this centerfold and it is two pieces together because these are the, the attendants to the bride. Um, and I made this the framed pieces. And I need to have them professionally framed. Actually, this frame is, is just a plastic one and it's not holding it very well. But anyway, I thought the color was beautiful. I love Art Deco. I love this time period. I love the dresses, the colors, everything about it. So all of those pages just, I love them. So that's why I have that there. And then I got a question about this one. And this is Queen of, you know what? I hope there's no spider webs behind me so that y'all can see how. Untidy it is, but this is um, Queen of Bumblebee. Queen of Bumblebees. And this is on a velvet mat. And this is by Terrence Nolan. Um, I don't know if this one was done under Professor Fisby. I think it was. He did a, a, a set of releases of patterns by Professor Fib Fisby, which was, you know, imaginary, but it was all with bugs. So like in the Victorian era where people would um, have um, insects and shadow boxes, it's along that theme. So I have one that's ladybugs. I have ones that one set that is moths, but this one um, meant a lot because as a little girl, my father would, um, I don't know the difference anymore, but there was a bumblebee that had a dot on its, um, on its back and one didn't. And one of those two would not sting. And so my father would catch them and he would put them in his shirt pocket so that I could put my little hand in his shirt pocket and grab it out and hold a bumblebee. And um, it's a sweet memory. He did that many times when I was a little girl. 
and especially now that he's gone, um, I stitched this because that's what this reminded me of. That's why it's on my wall. Um, like with so many of us, we all have stories that are um, associated with our pieces, and that's the story I have for this one. So there's that one. And then this one is Pink Sparrow Sampler. I stitched that one several years ago. And there's a little strawberry from um, Teresa Kitten Stitcher when she first started her little shop. She released um, the zine, and I ordered um, one of her patterns, a kit, and she sent that in. So um, I'm, like, I'm thankful to have that. And I think those are the only ones. Yeah, those are the ones I had questions about. Oh, nope, there was one more. Actually, it's not here. Hold on just a second, because what it was was someone asked about a previous video and asked about this sampler. Give me just a second. Okay. In the video she watched, this this was hanging where Pink Sparrow is, and I had moved Pink Sparrow some time ago. So because that stitcher was watching an older video, she didn't know I had moved it. But this one, every time it's seen, gets a lot of, I get a lot of questions about it. It's a beautiful piece. It's by Carriage House Samplers. And this is the Sarah Spur Sampler. It's very unique. It's quirky. Um, I think when I purchased this one, what really drew me in was the checkerboard floor, the bright red bird, and then look at this young girl's dress. Everything about it is just, it's just quirky and fun, and I love it. So there's that. Even the tree. Look at the tree. Striped with a, a dark green, olive green, and a bright yellow. <laughs> so thanks, everyone, for joining me today up in my stitch room, for spending a few of your precious moments with me. I appreciate it. I appreciate the comments, the subscribes, the thumbs up, all of it. Um, and I thank you for, for just visiting with, spending a few moments with me today. And I hope that when I come back next weekend, you'll do so again. Until next time, hugs and stitches. Bye-bye.